Hey friends, thank you so much for listening to this episode today. And before we get started, I would be so honored if you would just take literally a couple of seconds and subscribe, just click that subscribe button from wherever you listen, because that helps me to get this podcast out to more people by telling them that it is valuable. On today's show, I'm excited because I'm going to have a guest for you that's actually going to put me in the hot seat where instead of me asking the questions, she is going to be the one asking me the questions today. And I think you're going to find it fun and hopefully even inspiring. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Engaging Voice Podcast with Tara B. Each episode, Tara will bring you insightful instruction on the voice with interviews, technique, and training so you can have a tension-free, healthy, beautiful singing voice that flourishes and lasts a lifetime. Hey friends, I am so excited today for this episode because my special guest is someone I have known literally all my life, and that is not something you can usually say about most guests you have on. But I want to introduce to you today someone who is an avid world traveler. She is a writer. She is a stellar photographer, especially nature. And she actually did the photos for three of my albums. She is a hiker and she does biking and just keeps herself fit. And she is a mountain enthusiast. And I remember that she also sang with myself and my family at family gatherings. And the reason I know her so well is because she is my cousin. Please welcome Lisa Gebhard. Hello, Tara. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the kind intro. It's so fun when, for you listeners, when you know somebody, of course, it's, it, makes things really fun when you get to talk together. And one of the reasons that I wanted to have you here on this episode, because we have talked so often in the past, whether it's been on our travels together or on the phone or, you know, family gatherings, we talk about just things of life. And you always are so great at bringing up amazing questions, like things that I don't (laughs) think about. (laughs) And you're such, you know, you because you're a part of the family and when we used to like sing at gatherings, you were part of that. You've always been singing. You've always been mm-hmm. doing music, even though you don't do it as a profession. You're right. And so, and for those, for those of you who don't know too, uh, Lisa, actually, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, whether you're on my page or in some of my groups, um, Lisa has been the creator behind a lot of the posts that are going in there. So you get to see her creativity in there which is fun. But um, tell me a little bit, actually tell, I know you, but tell our (laughs) listeners a little bit more maybe about yourself or, you know, things that you enjoy in life or what, what are some of your passions or things that you ask questions about? Ooh, that is a excellent question. Actually, what do I ask questions about? Gosh, you know, there's just, Uh, A good friend of mine said, I am just a very curious type and also said, you ask the best questions. And it was, uh, it was about that time. It was just about something kind of scientific. And actually those things, uh, probably with the voice here too, is, is, is like, why does this happen? I'm observing this tell me why. And I will ask, uh, usually the person that I know is going to know something about that. So like sunsets, why is there a line here or whatever? And why, you know, I'm actually kind of into, uh, galaxies interplanetary because talk about the big picture. And I guess that's sums it up too. I like seeing the big picture and I want to drill down into subjects because I'm just curious. I love that about you. <laughs> it's just like, you know, the proverbial kid. Why? Yes. And and so for those of you who are listening today, um, we're going to kind of turn the tables, even though I just asked Lisa a question, we're going to turn the tables and let her ask me questions. Yay. Because since she has such good ones, especially when we've talked about music, about singing, I, I wanted to give an opportunity for that because the thing is, sometimes as a singer or vocalist, I may not always think about certain things. I might just do them. 
And I love when someone else comes in and says, yeah, what, what is the why of that? Or what about this? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to actually kind of turn it over (laughs) to Lisa for asking me just some questions. And maybe you guys have had some similar questions or maybe even the same ones that she asked today. And I thought it would be great to have it from a perspective other than just me. Yes. (laughs) So here we go. Are you ready? I am ready. (laughs) Okay. And I think just being a, a, an observer, or in this case, hearer, it, uh, things intrigue me. So I, I, I'm, the first one is I was listening to, there's a old French singer named Edith Piaf. And she, mm-hmm. she had a very unique voice, but she sang things in French, you know? And so I was thinking, okay, she is, you can hear volume out of her mouth. But she, you know, the French have a very nasal uh, sound. And I thought, okay, can you sing with both your voice and your nose? Is there volume coming out of the nose? I mean, what's happening in the, in the nasal part and the throat part? Well, I love that question. Um, and I just, the one thing, yeah, about French singers, you're, you've made already a great observation is that there is, they actually have in their language nasal vowels. Mm. And I'm not going to say them all here because to be honest, I'm still working on my own ah. French. I, I'm actually working on a piece right now with my voice teacher that is a French aria. And so I sometimes, my problem is as an American is that when I hear nasal vowel, I will tend to get overly nasal. When we hear the French speak, a lot of times I don't think they're as nasal in their sound of their own nasal vowels. It sounds more uh, fluid, more natural. But when you're asking about, yeah, can can the sound, like what, what is the nose's job in it, if you want to say, or the throat? Is that kind of what you're asking? Yes, yes. So the the sound that we are making goes through our whole vocal tract. And the vocal tract is everything from where the vocal cords themselves are housed Um, in the throat, and then all the way up through, yes, the mouth, and yes, the nose and your sinuses are part of that, because there's kind of this reverberation Mm -hmm. that can happen all the way through that sound. The nose, when we put air into the nose or put it out through our mouth, I mean, we breathe really kind of through both. Because think about like when you have a cold and you can't breathe through your nose, it's frustrating, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is that sense of taking a breath in. Yes. Mostly through our mouth, but a little bit through our nose. When we sing, if we put all the the pressure, all the breath, I should say into our nose, we might sound a little bit more this way. If I, if I purposely focus on my nose and right now I'm touching my nose just to kind of remind me, but if I put more of my air there, it's going to sound more nasal. So the, the whole thing in singing is always trying to find balance and we want to make sure that we're not putting all the air going out through our nose, probably a lot more through our mouth. <laughs> That's going to be the, it's the wider, it's the bigger thing in our head as far as space wise even. Uh-huh. And it creates a little bit more of that resonance. But I, th- I think what you're hearing with Edith, when, when you hear her sing, it does. She's got, she's still got a big sound, but it does sound more nasal. And I'm just wondering if that is in part two, because of some of those French nasal vowels, mm. like, uh, and, uh, and other ones. <laughs> Would you say even with, um, not picking on country, but, uh, they do have a more nasal sound. They're just, are they just pushing more air through that nose at that point? That's what I think, and good observation on country, because I've always, I've always kind of thought that where I hear a little bit more of that. The thing about the nasal sound, I think Broadway does a little bit of this too, but it tends to, if you push more air through, like if I do this, it, it can push through, it can be more piercing, so it can sound like it's projecting more, hmm. and but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is projecting more. It's just that it may feel that way, you know, cause maybe for some singers, they get used to the, actually all of us get used to a feeling of our own voice. Mm-hmm. And so, um, as, as we hear ourselves, as we feel like the vibrations, everything we do one day, like even as I'm talking right now, 
my brain is remembering exactly how I'm doing this. <laughs> and so tomorrow it's going to do this. Yes. It is. And so tomorrow it's going to do the same thing. It's so weird. I know. Wow. That's, that's interesting. If, if you held a microphone up to your nose, would sound come out? It wouldn't technically, you'd, you'd be hearing really more from your mouth, although oh. you can close your mouth. Think about it. You can close your mouth like, mm, mm, and you still hear that because mm-hmm. I've only partially blocked the sound. So yeah, there, there, there are places where it sound is escaping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It does. It does. It helps. It's, uh, reminds me of, the the, the hummers, the, the singers that do a lot of humming. Um, yes. And I've, I've always enjoyed that. Okay. Another kind of funny question, and uh, but <laughs> and you're not a biologist, but I said my one of my questions is do like all living things or animals uh have vocal folds? Do they have them? Do birds do dogs? I love that. I love that you're thinking that way because I actually I've thought about that many times hearing birds sing because obviously. They sing, they chirp and sing, and we hear our, you know, dogs and cats, dogs bark, cats meow. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, they not, I can't say that all living things do. I know that mammals do, and I know that birds do. So birds have something called a syrinx, and I don't exactly remember how the sound is made, if it's a little bit different than our larynx, (laughs) but but they still have, yeah, there is a vocal mechanism, same thing in other mammals, but I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know about fish. I don't know about <laughs> insects. <laughs> I, I thought about that. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so, you know, I guess we'd have to study more, but it is interesting. And and the one thing I, I just love that you brought it up because I have always taught this in the past. When you watch an animal, like a dog bark or a cat meow, you watch their body and their whole body is engaged in that bark or that meow. It's not like sometimes when people talk, they talk so much on like the shallowness of their breath instead of engaging their whole lungs. And so that, yeah, so it's, it's kind of a good example. Animals tend to, same with birds, think how loud birds are. Mm. You know, for a tiny little creature. So, yeah, it's going to get us all thinking, right? I know. <laughs> it's like something has to make that noise, you know, right. just noise in general. And it's like, well, it's a voice. That's what we, what we call it. So that's why mm-hmm. I was curious. Yeah. No, that's a great question. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, I've always wondered this and... I'm sure everyone that's just wanting to sing or project does. It's like, okay, how does my own voice sound to me? And I think we all know on recordings, it sure doesn't sound the same. And (laughs) um, so knowing that, do you know, is there like a norm? Like, does everyone sound consistently like a smaller voice than they're hearing or higher or fuller? Is there any kind of norm to that? Yeah, absolutely. And that is another great question because, you know, like you said, we hear ourselves maybe on a voice message or if we have sung and recorded ourselves and it just sounds different. Like, I'll be honest, sometimes when I'm talking on this podcast, I hear myself and I think, oh, my voice sounds nice and resonant. And then I'll hear it back and I'll think, wow, that just didn't quite sound right. like I thought. Right. Yeah. So so the, here's the deal. We hear ourselves in uh, two ways. Now, every and first, let me say this. Everybody else hears like you're hearing me. Right. Well, we're obviously hearing each other over the Internet. But the, normally, if we're talking in person, you are hearing what is coming out of my mouth. The sound that is coming out of my mouth is going to your you know, ear and it is picking it up and the brain is perceiving that. But when it's yourself, we also hear what's called like internally. There is this, I think they call it like a conduction of sound inside. Mm -hmm. And so 
we're so we're hearing not only what's coming from our mouth to our ear, but like for instance, if you plugged your ears, I can't do it right now because I've got headphones on. Yes. <laughs> but if I literally plugged my ears and then started talking, I would also have I would probably feel the sensation of my voice and I'd still hear it even if I really plugged my ears tightly. Right. And I agree. So that is yeah, so that is because of that internal hearing. So it's almost as if we're hearing in stereo, might be a way to say it. Okay. Where it, you're, you're right. It sounds to us, it sounds a little bigger. It might sound a little fuller. And then when you hear it recorded, you, you probably feel like, what happened? <laughs> it certainly does. It's certainly, it's, it's actually disappointing. <laughs> 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 right and, and and the the good part is though to know that the way people are still hearing us it's normal to them so like i'm used to hearing your voice and you're used to hearing mine you know through the years so it doesn't sound weird to us no you know to the other person no so true that is it's a very personal thing isn't it you you think you sound one yes. way and <laughs> Well, and let me just let me just throw this in too. That is part of the reason why a lot of times singers uh, don't enjoy singing without a sound system too, because a sound system not only can project the voice, but we can add things like reverb and other effects that make the voice sound bigger. And a lot of times people are uncomfortable just with their own sound. And I'm not saying that's why we use the sound system. It is a lot to just project you know, to a bigger place, bigger sure. space. But, but it is, I, I have been with other singers where they just don't want to ever have, you know, no reverb on their voice and, or some kind of effect that makes it sound bigger. And really, I, I just want to encourage people that as you're even listening or you're singing yourself, please know that your voice in itself is great. It is okay. It doesn't have to have those effects and, and other things. It can be nice to have them, but just the you, your personal voice, it's beautiful because it's unique to you. <laughs> that is such a good segue, Tara. Tara. Oh. <laughs> Tara can read my mind and I can read hers. So right. Only. Um, it's family. <laughs> it's fam. Okay. Um, you're saying your voice is your voice totally obvious, mm -hmm. but, um, it is true. And I, I agree not, um, not, I do copy other people when I try to sing, but, uh, but also I'm very conscious of my voice when, you know, when I am trying, right. Um, I am just yes. an amateur and I, I just want to sing in the car or sing along with some friends or something. And yes. And so it's, um, basically it's a question of the steadiness, I think of the voice. And by that, I mean, and my question is it's, I always think the point of general singing, if you want to sound good is just, you want, um, you want to stay on pitch and you, you don't want it to waver and you don't want it to be flat or, or sharp. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, I have a broad question to start out with. It's just like, is that, That's okay. is that the point of singing? It's like you want to it, it to be pleasing. And to me, it's kind of like, well, I don't want to be flat by far um, and hold the note. But is it, I don't know if you can just answer that. Is that kind of the point? Yes. And, and basically when you say, is it pleasing? Yeah. I mean, I think that there are some factors to a voice being pleasing. <laughs> Okay. In, in general. And like you said, staying on pitch and pitch. I actually talked about this in another episode um, of the engaging voice, but it starts in our brain and then it, it somehow tells these vocal cords and the muscles around them to shift, to make these different pitches. Ah, uh, like somehow, and it's very quick. You know, I didn't have to think like, oh, do those three notes. Wow. <laughs> but but it is um, pitch is something that starts, yeah, in the brain. And most people can naturally sing on pitch. There are some that struggle with it, but that can also be learned. And so, yeah, pitch is a huge thing. And I would even say just for someone's voice to sound as natural as possible, 
that that would be the goal. And what I mean by that is if someone, I, I had a student one time, this is long ago, he would talk when he talked, he had a very, I would call kind of booming voice. Like it, it seemed very resonant and almost like, he, well, he was an actor. So that makes sense to me, sure. a stage actor. But when he sang, all of a sudden, everything, literally, we were talking about the nose, it went right into his nose. <laughs> And I thought to myself, why is it changing? Like, what? Seriously, why? You know, if I go, I'm talking, I'm talking. It sh- it should sound the right, same. Right. And 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 so that really is kind of one of those measures, I think, of yeah, a, a pleasing sound is simply sounding like yourself. That's a good place to start. <laughs> I. I totally agree. You know what? I, Tara said I was a photographer and usually um, these days everyone kind of edits their photos and I don't like to do it, but I know that my yeah. um, camera is not as good as my physical eye. So when I edit, I want it to look like it is. I want it to look exactly yes. like that and not too much blue, you know, or too, too many shadows. It's like my eye didn't see shadows. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, I think that's kind of a key of where that can start. I mean, obviously all of us are going to have certain styles that we like when we hear people sing. Mm -hmm. And so there is definitely varied opinion on like, well, what's a great voice or not. Right. (laughs) And, but I, but I do think it starts with being, uh, you know, like I said, the most natural that you can sing also though in the most natural there are ways to allow our voice to be at its freest, like to have the most freedom. Think about when you see these athletes who are performing at just incredible levels. And um, like, I'm, I'm actually not a Tom Brady fan, but from what I understand for him to be doing what he's doing at the age he is as a quarterback is pretty amazing for his body. And so the reason that people can also is because they are finding freedom in the way in their technique, if you want to call it, or the way that they're performing. Um, and I mean, I would think like, do you ever find that even as you're, I don't know, biking or working out that some days it just seems like things feel easier Oh, by far. Yes. Yes. Good days. Yeah. And, and would some of that, would you say is because of the form that you do? Yes, and uh, and maybe this is practice and repetition in music, but uh, it, it's how strong I am that day and how flexible. Right, and and you're right, and all those things, strong, strength and flexibility are all part of having a body that can feel more free, and it's the same thing in singing. So even though I say start with your natural voice, you know that's where we want to be. For some people, their natural voice already over the years, for whatever reason they have manipulated things without knowing that they have. Mm. And it's just, again, it's back to that. When I first talked about the brain remembers, remembers how you did something. So it's just going to keep doing the same thing unless you tell it to do it differently. Okay. You know, and I know that's true. Like when I'm, I'm working out with a fitness trainer pretty much every day. And if I'm not doing, like sometimes she'll remind us of things like, you know, this should come from your core or this should come from your glutes. And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's actually easier, <laughs> you know, and I just, just like a tiny little change because my body wasn't used to doing that. And now it's like, oh yeah, my body can do that. And it actually feels better. Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like having poor posture. It's like, you know, your head is forward. No, and it's yes. like if you straighten up, you have just, and I think you've taught me that it's just like you straighten up and, you know, you, now you have a straight line between your, everything in the middle of your body there instead of being forward. Well, yeah. And like with your, with your head, especially, which I'm so guilty of it, looking at my phone, it's so stupid, but I we do, all it. do when that, I know, but when that heads forward, it weighs more The no. every like degree that it goes forward, it actually weighs more. So how can that be freedom for, you know, the rest of our neck and the body? It can't, Mm -hmm. it's going to cause tension. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, um, I've told Tara, uh, often I'm in a vehicle and, 
also a very resonant place to sing and I'm just like yes and then I can hear all of my little uh, miscues and you know critiquing my own voice and a lot of time it's it is just that steadiness it's like okay you're yeah. holding a d just holding an e yes and I would assume that's uh strength uh, a lot of strength and just kind of listening for yourself yeah, it's it's the stamina you have. It's it's your breath, really. Yeah. You know, your breath is what is is the beginning of you being able to sing and I being able to sing and even talking. We do it all the time, but our brain somehow manages our breath when we talk because it's so used to doing it. Um, and so it, it is sometimes about managing the breath and singing. And and the more actually <laughs> I have found this, the the better fit I am in general. Yes. Actually, it's easier to manage that breath better, too, in singing. I bet. Okay, another, just a segue. It's kind of the same question, but vibrato. I have asked Sarah this <laughs> probably the most because uh, it does have to do with the breath. And let me just ask you a little more my technical mm-hmm. part of that subject. And it's like, why on like longer notes, say Whitney Houston, big voice, you know, she's going off on her last note of the song and it starts out very even with no vibrato. I mean, strong, even, and then it goes to vibrato at the end and the big finish. What's happening in there? Such a great question. (laughs) (laughs) It is. Um, It's, it's basically now sometimes in certain styles of music, people will actually stop their vibrato a little bit, like in certain certain jazz singing. But in general, vibrato has to do with, again, a relaxation of tension. So if I just held a note and like if I just went, uh, no, I know that's kind of ugly sounding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It, there's, it's just, it's a tone. It's a tone that came out and it was actually supported by my breath. But at some point there has to be this oscillation that happens in that tone. And it happens because of, first of all, the breath has to stay steady the, because you can't have vibrato without the breath. Yeah. The breath is still driving air. The air is holding that note out, but those oscillations are kind of what's helping it to relax Ah. And so it would be similar to, again, let me just go to the body because I'm more familiar with this. If I was holding a plank, we'll just take that move. Okay. And, you know, if I'm in a plank position and I'm just holding it and maybe after 15 seconds, I'm still good, but we get to 30 and my muscles might start shaking. <laughs> I know. And you know, okay. and that shakiness actually, though, is preventing the muscle from like collapsing. Okay. Even though it, it's, it seems odd because you're like, well, it's shaking, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's, it's causing there to be some, some release of the tension so that the muscle doesn't just give out. And it's similar in the voice when that's happening too, that you're holding this note and yet now to hold it and, and let there be a release of tension that those little oscillations happen. They happen naturally over time, but again, you have to have breath. And some, some people have a natural vibrato, like literally from the time they're a child on and some people learn it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that help? (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's be because I, I I think this is where I struggle in the vehicle (laughs) as I, you know, (laughs) just singing along with my little ditties. Mm -hmm. Um, and and then I'm like, okay. I mean, I do this, people. I do this in the car. I'm like, la, 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 la. and I'm like, okay. Vibrato is is where it's like knowing that it's relaxation. It's like, okay, I want, I, I want, if you will, I want to hit my C at the end. Uh, yes. And then mm-hmm. and then it's just like I'm noticing that I don't have vi- the the vibrato, and I'm like, mm-hmm. am I really? Uh, am I really holding my tension? So I must be. Probably. And, and some of that just, and it it just might be that it's not that you're trying to hold it. What happens is just simply a lot of times there's just not quite the breath there at the end of a phrase needed to hold it. 
And so, and, and I will bring this up because I think, I think you and I have talked about this before. Well, I'm pretty sure we have, sure we but with, when I see singers that are the jaw starts to move with vibrato, that's not, and I hate to say that because I love our beloved Whitney Houston. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I just, I do. I always loved her singing and I miss her. Yeah. And, um, but she and, and other singers will sometimes have this jaw shaking and a shaking jaw is only telling us actually that there is still tension because vibrato doesn't start with the jaw. If you try to go, uh, 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 like I'm moving my jaw, sure. you'll see, you'll see how, if I do that really fast, uh, uh, uh it's going to make my jaw really tired. Uh, it's just vibrato doesn't start there. And for some people it, I don't really know why it kicks in, but again, it is that there is some tension and it's a way that they found to make their vibrato, but that doesn't mean that it's the best way to make the vibrato. And if, and like I say, if you have none, it could just simply be because maybe there's just not quite the breath needed to keep supporting it. Like you can hold the note, but nothing more than that. Interesting. And uh, like if you were holding the plank, <laughs> <laughs> the plank, then, okay. Interesting. Last part of this, this, uh, this long question is just that you were saying not the jaw, but how about the voice box, the, uh, your, um, the vocal folds. vocal folds, it's, you know, you can produce one by uh, moving that up and down. No, it's not. The, the voice box itself actually is to be neutral. So when we, and here's a way to find out where neutral is. Okay. If you swallow, you put your th hand on your throat and just swallowed, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it goes up and that's normal. It's supposed to go up when we swallow. When you yawn, it goes down. Okay. So, so in the middle, right where we started, that is neutral. And that is where it's in the least, it's not going to have tension if it's staying neutral. If it starts moving up or down, that's where we're going to have the actual tension, which just reminds me, <laughs> now that I'm thinking this through, if, if the voice box is starting to rise, like let's just say for those people that have their vibrato and their jaw is shaking, mm -hmm. it could actually be that the voice itself, the voice box is rising, creating tension, pulling on the tongue, the, the back of the tongue is connected right by the voice. And then that would also cause by the tongue being close to the jaw. I mean, it's, it just kind of one thing would trigger the next, but that's mm -hmm. where you would continue to have tension. Yeah. So, so much to holding that tone or, you know, the, uh, that's what I always think. I always think note by note, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's like, where to, was that? held or not yes mm. well and it's every note like you say it is note by note and technically you're that breath has to be there for every note you know yes. if, if i was yes. playing if i was playing the trumpet and playing different notes i'd still have to have breath to do those different notes so it's always that breath behind it that is that ultimate support but then not only the breath the voice box needs to stay neutral, neutral. for there to be no yeah, no tension. Okay. My last question. I have always wondered, and I just cannot, it's actually kind of a sorting out question, Tara. It is, um, <laughs> when I hear uh, African Americans, especially in large choirs, in fact, pretty much only because I'm talking about harmonies. And yes. they, and you'll really have to help me on this. It, I, I know it's, there's a style. Okay, the style is amazing i just can't even mm -hmm. figure it out like i can usually pick out my soprano or melody um but if you said try to sing the alto or any other part i'd say i have no idea I, it it it's so smooth i what is going on there <laughs> well first of all magic <laughs> <laughs> i love the magic yeah, me too. And I, there is nothing better to me than hearing uh, African American like a gospel choir. Oh. It's just, it's so full of life and beautiful. Mm. What I think, and there is a certain, like you say, almost style to it. They, what I hear sometimes in the harmonies, it's it's actually similar to other choirs. It's just that to me, all the 
harmonies, which usually our harmonies as we sing them are in intervals, which is just measurement of music, okay. but of thirds. So if I sing like do, mi, so, mi, do, those are three different notes and they're all three notes apart. I- so we call them thirds apart. Most of our harmonies tend to be that way. And what I hear sometimes, at least to my ear, when I'm hearing an African-American choir is just that I hear uh, it's almost like the thirds get just a little flatted mm. almost. And, and and I don't mean that they're running out of breath because that can be one reason why notes get flat. But I do think it's a stylistic thing. And I do think that it also has to do with hearing that, like growing up, hearing that, okay. being in that the culture of that kind of singing, um, kind of the same as, you know, it, I know that people grow up in families where there's never any music in their family and maybe they can't even hear pitches, okay. you know, the differentiation. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I grew up in families where music was a part of it. So pitch for us is not hard. And I, and right. I really think so in, yeah. So I think for these, the people that are in these choirs, They have, that has been part of their growing up, their culture, their church maybe. And so they're, they're again, emulating what they've heard and then continuing to sing that way. And it is also, I think a style, but it's, it is very unique to them. And I do think it is more from that whole thing of listening, being a part of that. Just like, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, so I have a Minnesota accent, Uh but if I had grown up, you know, in right. Alabama, maybe I, or Alabama, I'm not sure. Oh, but there you go. Enter your accent. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it's because of what I'm hearing all the time. And, you know, I grew up in a Lutheran church. So my choral experience is that kind of singing and um, which is different yes. and both are good. And I think both are needed, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I do think that a lot of it has to do with it. I mean, I might be wrong, but that's kind of what, it, it just seems to make sense to me with how our voices work because all our voices have the capability of singing with life, with energy, mm-hmm. with soul, <laughs> if yeah. you want to say it, with, with um, you know, but it, it just depends how, what we've heard as, as children. Okay. I mean, this is maybe just the comment part. It's just like, it is again, so smooth and, and actually Mm -hmm. I'm, they use a lot of just sliding into their next uh, note Yes, and they're all on cue for that. And it's such an on cue uh, group of people that I'm just that, that energy where it's just like, and a lot of times I don't even see a director. I mean, I'm probably just right saying I've seen it on TV, but it's just like that, that just, it just, I I have more questions. I know it's just, it's such a broad <laughs> thing that I just, but I, I, I'm always amazed that I just cannot, or, or this might be, I might be wrong in this Tara, but uh, usually you pick out the melody line and it's just like, I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure where the melody is. Isn't that a weird question? I if somebody said was saying a a, a couple bars and they'd mm-hmm. say you try to sing that, I I, I just don't know if I could. <laughs> and are you talking about that specifically to like a gospel choir? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think that in part it's because their harmonies are so. Oh so full. And a lot of times it just made me think, um, not only, you know, I was talking about thirds before the way we measure different steps in music. Um, but, but a lot of times I can, I was just thinking of a group I heard on Instagram once this year, it was, it was not a full choir. It was six people, but they were all doing, they were doing a six part harmony. Mm. So there were other parts of the chord, what we call like a chord makeup that wasn't just like the by thirds there were instead of just doing do and me and so it might have been like do and ray maybe there was a ray and they're like da da someone would be singing this note and someone would be singing that note and so it becomes these yeah these really lush chords yes and i do think that's also to the style of it which is really beautiful and full and that's why it doesn't surprise me that if you can't 
you know, always pick out the melody. It's because of that. The group uh, Take Six, do you remember them? I do. Yep. They had they, they had six part harmonies. <laughs> and so if you listen to them, um, that's what you're hearing. And so I yeah, when, when there's a lot of harmony, it's it's unless you're really trying to listen for a very specific part. For most people, it's kind of a wall of sound coming at them, which is beautiful in itself. Yes. But if you but if you pick out those harmonies, you have to listen more detailed to find, oh, you know, each part. By far. And I think, you know, I do listen and I'm, I, I'm exhausted. Yes. I'm like, I, <laughs> I, I, sometimes I can hardly tell the male and female part. It's, it's almost, and you know what? The wall of sound is perfect. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's, that's actually the beauty of it. You know, there's harmony can have so much beauty. A lot of times in this podcast, I know I focus on like the solo voice because, you know, people are maybe taking lessons or singing that way. But man, when you get some great harmonies together, yes, there's, there's so much beauty. It's like when you see a sunrise in the morning, you know, and there's one hue of color and then another and then another, and and you almost can't take it in. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, there is no lines. There kind of is no line up there. It just blends. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. So, well, you know, I got to tell you, thank you. I I knew this would be amazing. (laughs) I have more Tara. I'm sure. I thought I'd be sitting in my car where I probably was singing. (laughs) Well, and we might have, what we might do you guys is have a part two of Lisa G Mm. (laughs) on the show. Um, Because honestly, yes, I think there could be enough questions and we'll probably save it for another time. But man, I just appreciate just the way that you've thought through these. And and I know in your brain, it doesn't take you long to come up with them because you are curious and you are, you're not just curious though, you pay attention. That is a key part of singing period is just paying attention, making those observations. Mm -hmm. Because if if you don't observe, um, it's going to be harder to learn things. And even about your own singing, if you never observe it, it's going to be harder. And it's never, I just want to clarify too, that I know for me as a voice teacher, I don't ask people to observe so that they criticize themselves. It's so that if there's something that can bring out more beauty, Hey, let's go for it. Right. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Any, any last comments before we go? Nope. It's just, uh, one of those subjects. I, I do just kind of, uh, if I am listening to music, uh, my head is is engaged. You know what? It actually does yes. make my head engage. And I could listen to the song um, a number of times and want to pick out something different. And it's it's almost an exercise. It's like, let's do that again. And because there's so much. Yes. To this. Yeah, there is. And, you know, just I just was thinking about this for you guys, if you're intrigued, even just by the questions Lisa has been asking, and you want to look at her photography, because actually, you know, music, singing, photography, it's all in that artistic realm. Right. Um, where can they find your photography? They can find me on Facebook at Lisa Gebhard Photography. It's a page. And I do have a website. Um, just lisagebhard.com. Yay. And I will put those in the show notes so you guys can actually have clickable links and find uh, Lisa right there. So I think we are going to have a part two sometime. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so save, save your questions and we'll get, we'll get down to more. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being on today. It was just so much fun, cousin. <laughs> it was Tara. And my okie dokie was my Minnesota accent coming out. <laughs> yes. Love it. Even though you're in Colorado now, but hey, That's right. you grew up in Minnesota. Right. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Hey, friends. I hope you had as much fun listening as we did doing the show together. And if you found it really helpful or just informative, please feel free to share it on social media. I always appreciate when people do that. And frankly, you guys know from the past that I am so happy that you are listening to this podcast. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Engaging Voice. Tara is committed to giving you tools each week to keep your voice thriving. Join her next time for another valuable and informative chapter.